distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Abarizenu. On behalf of ALP, our consultants, main contractor, subcontractors and suppliers, we're very excited to welcome you, welcome you to our 49-acre office. ALP West will be a million square feet by the time it's completed and it will be a modern logistics and industrial facility sitting on one of the main arterial roads in East Africa and in Kenya. I think it's important to note that the buildings that we've built here at ALP West in the, in the first phase and the ones that we will build in the next phase are targeted to help SMEs. These are the organisations that drive growth in this country and will provide the jobs to Kenya's young workforce. If anyone thinks logistics in Kenya, it's no longer about a warehouse in the middle of industrial areas we were saying earlier. It is now about efficiency. It's about uh, an environment that is both clean but also uh, modern. Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to be here today to celebrate this next significant milestone in ALP's journey. Witnessing your growth and seeing this project come to life has been a wonderful experience for us too. Well done on building another excellent facility. Your commitment to completing this project on time and to this spec, despite the monumental challenges the globe has faced, over the last few years is incredible. ALP's success is also Talisi's success. Today, with the opening of Kyoga ALP West, there will be many more businesses operational at Talisi. Long, long ago, in a country far, far away, uh, I was development director responsible for delivering buildings not wildly dissimilar to this one. And I used to tease, tease my then boss that buildings could be on time, on budget, or on specification, and that he was free to choose any two of those, but not all three. I find myself to be immensely proud to lead a team that has now delivered nine buildings in Kenya, all of them that have actually met all three of those criteria, and I am <laughs> enormously impressed that they have exceeded my old standard and, and never make that joke. We've completed two phases here, and as you can see from this unit. These units are here to focus on startups, small managed enterprises, um, but we have another 800,000 square feet of development here to come and we will do high bay buildings for bigger tenants, we will do even smaller business units, startups, and we will do specialist industrial buildings um, for users as they define them and we will produce what I believe is an absolutely world-class park in this location. Proud as we are of what ALP has achieved while investing $150 million in Kenya, we are absolutely aware that we need strong and constant partners to prosper and succeed. The first of those I would like to mention is the County of Kiambu. Um, this is our second scheme in the County of Kiambu. Uh, we're here at ALP West, but ALP North was our first. That's completed. Um, during, while it was being constructed, it provided 500 or so construction jobs on a constant basis. And now it's, it's half a million square feet of development and it provides 700 quality jobs um, to quality tenants. Um, I would pick out in particular Twigger Foods, Copia, Freight Forwarders, Solutions and Mapay. And we're very pleased and very proud of that product, but we're equally pleased and proud of this product here. We as ALP would like to develop the first carbon zero logistics park on the continent. And that is where we are sitting at the moment. We've currently done the first two phases. We've got a couple of more to go by 2030. But that is our ambition and that, that is our goal, I guess. 
How are we going to get there? First things first, we need to understand what our carbon footprint is, which we've done. We need to disclose that to the industry and to our stakeholders, which we've done. Next step is to reduce the impact of the materials that we use, which contribute towards approximately 11% of global carbon emissions are just the building materials that we use in the building that you see here today. The remaining 28% of the emissions that our industry contributes is in actually using the buildings after the buildings are up and done. So what are we doing and how does this building perform? From an energy perspective, if you were to compare this building to another industrial building, which is business as usual, say industrial area, this building is 48% more energy efficient. What does that mean? It means a lot of things to a lot of people, but to the people who actually use the building, the tenants and the customers, typically if you're in Mombasa Road, you'd be expecting to pay about 7,000 US dollars a month in your utility bills. But because of the initiatives that we've implemented in this building, we expect you to be paying about 3,162. That's a $3,872 saving, direct to the bottom line. You might ask, how do we do this? Reduced window to wall ratio, basically orienting the building east to west so that we're facing north. We're making the most of the fact that we're on the equator. So we're using mother nature to make our buildings more sustainable, more efficient, and reducing the incremental costs of actually building the facilities. From a water perspective, this building is 44% more efficient than business as usual. What does that mean? That's 1.7 million liters of water that this building saves per month. So it's quite a significant difference in the way we do business. And what we're trying to do is to encourage the industry to say, guys, it is possible. We're happy to share our learnings so that as an industry, all the buildings that we put up are achieving this kind of efficiency levels. The final metric that we measure is what's our carbon footprint in terms of the embodied carbon in our materials. So we've been able to save 62% in terms of um, carbon in our materials. We are emitting about 69.2 tons of CO2 per year, but we're saving 91 tons of CO2 per year. So you can see just how efficient these buildings are, and it's a win-win for everybody, basically. Our investors getting a return, making an impact. Our tenants are getting savings to their bottom line. Our contractors and our consultants have become best in class, and they're now mostly sought after. And um, we're quite happy that they're being poached because it means that industry as a whole and Kenya benefits. And lastly, but not leastly, is that Mother Nature and our future generations benefit from the small incremental changes that we're making. So just for context, the certificates that are about to be handed out, um, these are the certification that back up the numbers that I gave you. So I'm telling you about all the savings that we're achieving. So it is audited by an independent third party, and then it is certified um, through the World Bank Group. And it's as a result of that layers that we're able to hand on heart say that we are achieving the results that we're achieving. We're here to, to celebrate uh, ALP and, uh, and partners. And if you'll forgive a, a, just a personal a bit of advice that was given to me when I was young in my career by a mentor uh, who was a family friend but went on to head up the Rockefeller Foundation and then actually run uh, the US Census, uh, his advice was life is logistics. And of course that uh, came back to me uh, when the team asked me to come here today. And you know, when, when I was a bit younger, I, I didn't quite understand what he meant. But the whole point is you can have dreams and ideas and visions but unless you have all the planning and all the connections that go with it, they, they don't become fulfilled. So I've always recalled that, and it came back to me again, uh, coming here again, Richard, that um, life often is logistics, and uh, we're here to celebrate that today. It is really in, uh, a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to yet again come here to witness the transformation that is taking place, to see the kind of change that is possible when the right intention, the right 
set of uh, uh, people are all aligned and for today I'm here to, to bear witness and say I was in this green field one day a year ago and now it's no longer a green field but a great opportunity for us as a country, for us as a village, for us as a community and I believe my CS is going to uh, get even more excited because the whole of this morning he was challenging us, you know, saying it is not enough to talk, talk. Just follow it with some action. Show us what it is you've been talking all this time. I'm here to declare that Limuru and indeed Kiabu stands with you and that it, although this is your project, it is our project because it is in line with what our president is pushing. We must start thinking about lifting those people who are down there to another level. And what a better way than bringing such an investment in a, new, in a rural setup because we are used to industry here. Let us bring those uh, industrial areas in small scale to where people live. I'm delighted to be here this morning and to welcome you home. This is my home, this is our home. But more important is to state again the commitment of the government of Kenya led by President William Ruto to promoting investment, to welcoming investors so that you can be our war partners in the journey to create jobs, to increase incomes of our people, and to grow Kenya's competitiveness in a regional and the global stage. So thank you very much. This is totally in line with that commitment.